Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Photoshop. Photoshop 221, but same basically can be done with 2020, 2019, etc. as well. However, the only difference is that there's no gradients panel. Gradients make it slightly easier to use this approach with fill layers, but you can still use it and I'm, with the method I'm just going to show. So let's just remove that current gradient layer. Now, a gradient layer is just a preset. There's no pixel information involved. Literally, you there's a number of things you just can't do. You can't apply brush strokes to it and all those sorts of things. So it's just a resource information. So let's just go to a layer and new fill layer and a gradient. So that comes up here with the name. You can enter a name. I generally never do. I just keep it gradient fill one. And you can run through darken, multiply, and so on and so on. And obviously, it's still kind of, I actually think that should not be on that panel. I think it should be on the next panel, but that's a different issue. But click OK, and then you've got the various presets here. And you can select preset, gradient preset. And now you can see your design. So you can see your design there. And also you can see over here in the layers, you've got multiply there. That was the one that I set it to when I came in. And you can run down there. Now, what you can also do, you can click on there and you can bring up the gradient editor, which is super useful because it means you can add some additional stops or well, change some of the additional colors. So if you don't want blues, you can always change to red, greens, etc. And you can click and add an additional stop. You can click anywhere along this line and you can also add transparency information. I'm not going to do that, but just say that you can, if you want to, edit it. So click OK. Now you can also go through radial, linear, angle, etc. And you can modify and move this. Now, sometimes this moves, and I must admit, I always thought it did move with this. For some weird reason, it is no longer doing that. But however, what you can do, you can change the angle. Obviously, there's no use when it's radial, but if you go back to linear, you can see it as you change that, you can see it move around. And there's other options as well, reflected, which is always quite a nice one. And you can see that moving around. And you can also scale it, so 25. So you can just set it there, click OK. So you've got your design. That's a gradient fill layer. I say it's got no, you can't go with brushes. Let's just go, just quickly show you. Uh, there's a brush and you can see you can't access it. You can't do anything. You can flatten it. You can always go to layer and flatten. Then you can use it just as a normal pixel layer. This is not a pixel layer. However, what you can do, and let's say you can go and double click on this. You can change it at any point. So if you want to, you can, now I'm just going to go and select the move tool up here. Now, double click on there. Now you can move it around. Maybe it just requires the move to be selected beforehand. I'm not certain. I always thought you could use, just as soon as you go in here, it always seemed to work. Now it doesn't seem to, but it does on the second time. Very confusing. But you can change the angle. You can do all those things exactly as before and change the gradient as well. If you don't want that gradient, select OK. There it is. What you can do, you can also add additional but I'm not going to do that with this approach, the layer and go to new fill layer and gradient. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to do it now with the use 221 version. So I'm just going to remove that. Yes. Back to the complete. So you've got gradient. So gradient is window and gradients. And you can simply select one of these designs here. And there's also the right side menu. Here you've got a number of options import except legacy gradients so you can bring in loads of additional gradients that for some weird reason they don't by, by default bring in in the first place I'm not certain why but there's not so once you've got that and also you can set what it defaults to here so you've got here you want to say always have radial gradient the, the circular one if you've got radial gradient you can set it here just set it to radial gradient. Now, when you create a new gradient, and simply what you do is you drag across. So you drag across there, and you've got your gradient. Just as that. Fortunately, you can't move it around. You can't do anything like that. If you want to move it around, double click, and then, then you can move it around. Cross fingers. Because <laughs> sometimes it doesn't seem to do it sometimes. Sometimes it does. Has a mind of its own whether it's going to let me move the item. But you can do that. You can just, and also if you want to change it, say, you, you know, you. Don't want that one. You don't want that color. You decided, you know what, I want a different one. So I'm just going to select that. You can just select the gradients there. Just simply select, click there. And you see every time when you click, it's always a radial. That's the default option. You've set that. 
over here. If you set it to angle, it would do angle. So just let's put it to angle now. So I click there and you can see it's an angle. So that's quite, quite a nice little feature. And you can just click there or drag. I must admit, I generally drag, but click is just as good. I don't know, I've always just, I love dragging that. Okay, what you can also do, if you want to add additional layers, so obviously you've got this layer, it's pretty good, but you might want more than one. Well, of course, you can always go back here to layer and go to new fill layer and gradient. You can always do that. But what you can also do, you can just simply go over here and let's just go for reds. So I can select red there. Oops, I didn't want to click it. What I want to do is hold down the Alt or Option key. Hold down the Alt or Option key and now drag. And you do that. And what happens? It creates a new layer. So again, go to another one. Hold down, before you do anything, hold, otherwise you just change it. Just go, hold down the Alt or Option key and then drag. And it will create another layer. Hold down the Alt or Option key, drag, creates another layer. And so on, so you can see it just adds multiple layers. Unfortunately, as nice as it is with the fact that they've given you an option for the, uh, over this right side. And it's one thing I think they, slight oversight that they've missed, linear gradient. It would have been nice if they'd actually set up a sort of an angle option there. So basically when you drag it over, that you can default it always to, to a different angle. I don't want it to be at zero degrees each time. It'd be nice if it was, you know, 90 or something. But you have to go now manually, I have to change it. But you could set it here, just 90, 45, a couple of angles here. I think that would be a nice feature. However, that's the way it's done. It's just got this option here. So you've got these multiple gradient fill layers. But what you can do, you can, of course, blend them. And that's one reason why I think it's nice that you can double click on here and you can change it. So maybe make it 180 there, 160. Oops, that's just dragging off there. Which seems to drift. Unfortunately, with this mouse, it's sort of you've got the, the right click. Great feature, but it unfortunately also has a tendency to, to uh, move things as well. Slightly, maybe someone could put a comment saying how to stop that move feature because it just always gets me because I very rarely ever use that feature. Now, what you can do, you can go here to normal and you can say darken. You know, I want to go for light and difference. So you can run through these overlay and that's for that layer. So you can go to that layer because obviously this is, these are all normal. And you can then say multiply, overlay. And that's another thing actually they could have done there. They could have actually made it, oh, maybe that's pushing the, the menu structure a bit much to actually had it a default thing. But I guess it does at least, uh, you can always change it there very quickly. So you can just go quickly run through it and you can see what happens. You've got difference there and you can do various other things. And you can always, at any point, you can double click and you can move things around, hopefully. So you can move that if you want, change the angle, click OK. So you've got this design there. Now what you can also do, and I'm not gonna keep all those. I don't want to keep all those, I just want to keep one. But I just want to demonstrate that you can blend between the gradients. So select that gradient, and you'll notice at the side, you've got here, you've got a little option here. Now obviously at the moment it's overlay, so you can't see anything, that's not much use, but normal. So you've got normal, you've got this mask here. Just select that so you can see it's highlighted. It's actually now got highlighted. That one isn't highlighted anymore. That one's highlighted. So what can you can do? Well, you can go to any sort of like pixel. Now I said before that it wasn't a pixel thing. Well, it is a pixel in some ways in that the mask is a pixel and it works on a gray scale. So it's black and white. Now white shows everything. You've got, you've got your design. Now, if you put in black and again, how it's moves again, put it down. Go there, I'm just using just a basic rectangle. You could use any other shape. You could use brushes, gradients. You know, you could select one of these, use a gradient again. But it's pixel, and that's the key thing up here, pixel layer. Don't use shape, no point using shape. What you can then do is you can then add, with this one selected, and I'm using black. And as soon as you do that, you can see you've broken into it. So it's still there, obviously it's still there. You can still see it. If I remove that, I can delete that mask it's still all there but i've now cut through to the background that's to see the background and now what you can do also with you can go back to this and you can then go to layer and you can go layer style let's just show that it's actually cutting through and drop shadow and you can actually see through it and you've got this lovely sort of frame design 
But you can also, what you can do, you can go back to this design and you can think, you know what, I don't want just a straight rectangle. What I can do, I can got effects, got various effects. I can go to Gaussian Blur. So you can blur it. So you just say, oh, you know what, just blur it slightly. Don't have to, but there you've got a blurred frame now. Also, what you can do, undo, I just did an undo. So I, what I can do, I can just go down to distort, and maybe wave. Unfortunately, the preview, in fact, there is no preview. It doesn't preview, so you can't see what you can see, obviously, here. Very, very tiny. I would love to see them update this, these, some of these things. So it's actually a much better, bigger size option, or just basically preview. <laughs> Just change that would be quite nice. A preview button, just that. However, what you can do, you can change the various things and you can see it's gonna have some sort of effect there. And you can see the effect. The end result is it's cut through on the screen like that. And you can see through and you've got that shadow still there. And you can see it over here. So if I go over here and I duplicate this, so I can just duplicate this layer with the mask. See, it's gonna be duplicated. So let's duplicate layer. Click OK, and you've got two now. So you've got two layers there. And of course you can always move that. Let's just go there. Resize it. Move it around like that. As long as you've got this bounding box working, and you've obviously got here, you can transform the design. So you can decide to rotate the design and you can see you can put it over there. Now it's moving both. Should I, should I just select that one. Didn't want that. So I can select that one there. And you can see, didn't actually notice it was actually selecting both. Not much use that. What I wanted to actually move it around. So you can actually see it's cutting through and you can see the underlying one there. Press turn. So you can see you can create all kinds of weird and wonderful designs. And that's, of course, looking all the way through and you're cutting through to the lower layer, which has got a shadow, which is then looking through, cutting through with a shadow down to the background, as if you've sort of got some layers there. Also, what you can do, and let's just remove this, this one, and I'm going to delete this now. Just quickly delete there. So I'm just deleting it by there. So I've just got the gradient there now. Well, what? I can apply effects and do various other things because I can turn this into a smart object. So with that selected, that's the key thing. Go to layer and smart objects, convert to smart object. So it's converted to a smart object. You can still edit it. You can always double click at any time. That's the thing about smart objects. So just go over, double click and you're into the, again, back into here. Oh, you can remove the drop shadow. And you can, of course, double click again there and change maybe the gradient. You know what, I don't want that one, I want purple. And I can select that, click OK, and then go over here and close, save, and it's back, and it's still a smart object. Now, what you can also do with that selected, that layer selected in layers, you can go to filter, and you can go to distort, and maybe wave for this. And now you can apply effects. Before you turn it into a smart object, you can't, it's got no pixel information, it just will not work works on the mask but it doesn't work so you could but you can see the effect here again unfortunately because there's no preview would be lovely but you click OK and you can see the design has been added there you can still see of course it's still got there displays it as before but what you can also do is you of course can duplicate this so hold down the alter option key and duplicate and you can see you've got a duplicated design there and then you of course can if you want you can rotate this design Apply additional effects. Maybe go to filters, wave again. So you can apply different waves. Another wave there, just a couple more waves. So you've got a weird and wonderful design. You've got two layers. And what you can do with two layers is, of course, you can blend them. So go down here, and you've got darken, difference, and so on. So you can create some very abstract designs. And you can, of course, select both those layers, and you can go to layer and smart object, convert to a smart object, a single smart object. So you can do that. So I'm just going to remove all that now. Again, the mouse. <laughs> Sorry about the mouse going all over the place. However, what you can also do, you can use selections, which is obviously masks. So you simply go to the selection, and of course you can use any selection. 
Just create a selection like that. Just got a selection in the center of the document like that. And now I've got the gradient panel here. And what I can do, I can drag, drag over. And you can see instead of filling the entire thing, but you can see straight away the mask over here. Now the mask shows where it is there. Now I can always go to that mask, click there. And you'll also notice if you go to properties, and this, I haven't shown this, go to properties and you've got density. So you can lower the density. Basically means you can see through the mask. You can actually see through, see the rest obviously like that. Let me go back down to zero, but I'm gonna keep it 100%. So you can see that there. And also what you can do, you can feather it as well. There's other options as well, refine it. So you can feather that and make it obviously slightly more blurry, like that. Now also you can just go back to that and you can see the design there and you can still, of course, double click there and you know what, I'm gonna change it. Just gonna go for a different one, say blue. Blue one there, and that's tweaked like that. Now, also what you can do, again, you can hold down the ultra option key, hold that down and duplicate. So you've got two designs like that with that fragmented, and you can create a nice, and also of course, you've got blending modes. So you can always go to normal or difference, and you can see now as you've got difference there, hold down the ultra option key, you can create some very weird and wonderful sort of design like that. very quick and easy just using that selected design and of course you can always rotate the design as well do many other things as well of course and this as i've just done that what you can also do of course you've got this design here oops don't want to delete it you've got this design and you can convert that into a smart object. Because otherwise, if you just go to filters, try this, so you go to blur, Gaussian blur, it will just tell you, you can't do it. Basically, it must be converted to smart object. So, I will do it, yes, please convert to smart object, and now simply apply the blurring effect, and that will be blurred there as well. And again, great thing about smart filters, or whatever, you can always just remove it. So if you don't want the Gaussian blur, you can simply remove that. So that's a great way with fill layers, fill gradient layers, and you can modify them in all kinds of ways, combine them in multiple ways, use masks, use selections, and probably half a dozen other things which I haven't gone through in this. But I uh, hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always adding new tutorials all the time about Photoshop, Illustrator, and many other applications as well. Also, if you've got any comments, any questions, please put in the thing if I've done something wrong, went too fast, sort of did something that you didn't understand because of the movements or whatever, please let me know. Also, please check out the Graphic Extras website. Always adding new tutorials on that all the time. I've got a link, obviously, in the description, so please check that. Also, please subscribe. I'm always adding new videos near enough every day. A dislike or a like. Always appreciated. Either way. Thank you much.